in episode eight, we spoke about Ruth and Boaz. And I want to tell you, there is such a buzz out there now about the new word you dropped in the midst there called proximity relationships. Mm -hmm. We're getting all kinds of comments and questions about it. So I wanted to come back a little bit today to a proximity relationship. Talk to us, Dr. Vassal. Well, a proximity relationship starts... Uh, by you, probably you came into a relationship with God maybe recently. Maybe you were struggling in the dating world. Things haven't quite panned out for you. And you realize there is a God in heaven who's written a love story concerning you. Mm -hmm. And in that love story, he's already defined your role in that in that love yeah. story. And you're like, wait a minute, God, is this really true? Do you actually care about love? Do you care about my love life? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, he does. And so you're in that process probably where you're like, hey, let me just try this God's way now. Yeah. So you start to pray a little bit, and you're like, hey, God, can you bring the right partner into my life? I'm choosing to believe you. Just bring them now. Yeah, because you tried your ways, and you're like, but how does this thing actually work? Mm. Well, the way it starts to work is God brings somebody in your proximity that you meet or brings you in the vicinity of someone else. So you have to pay attention to who's coming into your life and how they're coming into your life, mm -hmm. why they're coming into your life. That's what we mean. That's what happened with Ruth and Boaz, for example. Ruth was a Moabite, and God moved her to, to Israel, yeah. uh, close to Bethlehem. And Boaz had his own field. He was busy in his assignment. Mm -hmm. He was busy doing what he was supposed to be doing. But God brought this woman into his proximity. Yeah. And in that process, they connected and they met. And God began to have Ruth play a role mm -hmm. in the love story that he had for them. And Boaz play a role in the love yeah. story he had for them. And that's kind of how this happened. So we have to, the key thing is, if you really believe there's a God and you've begun a relationship with him, you have to realize he's the author of relationships and he has written a love story for you. Yeah. And so now you're like, okay, step two, I believe that now. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to build a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And in this process, you'll find God will separate you from the normal way of doing things in your life. Mm -hmm. If you've been dating a lot, he's going to say, slow down. I don't want you to date for a little while. Okay. He's going to get you away from all the wrong relationships. Mm -hmm. And he's going to help you focus on you becoming your authentic self. He's going to mature you, grow you, love you in a way that you start becoming a Christ woman okay. or a Christ man. And you, as you become that person, the real version of yourself, and you work on your character, and you develop humility, and you learn the value of vulnerability, and you learn the value of true relationships, mm -hmm. God will begin to grow you out of your old way of doing things. Yeah. Uh, if you're used to playing a lot of games, for example, mm -hmm. God's going to help you say, hey, it's no games, just love now. So, okay, you're referring I'm, to like dating games. Dating and the games, games, yeah. Men and women play kind of exactly, thing. Exactly, you know, and oftentimes they haven't really worked for people. And mm -hmm. just because... Uh, there's exceptions to the rules. That doesn't mean that's the way you want to go. Yeah. But when you're really looking for a real relationship from God, He has different ways to bring people into your life. Mm -hmm. So you got to start paying attention to how God brings people into your life. As long as you're doing the thing God wants you to do right now in this season, mm -hmm. that will open the door for the right person to come in your life. Okay. I think that's also important, right? Okay. So it's not so so number one step is just understanding that God is the author of the love story. He has a love yes. story. But what you're saying is that we have a role to play and we kind of got to play it the way God wrote the love story for us. That's, um, right. that, that's what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. And if you don't play your role, you could miss out on the love story that God has reserved for you. And this is a key point that identifies with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Because if you're really trusting him, you want him. He knows what you need. Mm -hmm. He knows what you're attracted to. Yeah. He knows how you can build a deeper and meaningful relationship. He knows how your relationship can have the vision that he wants you to have. Mm -hmm. Run the race together in life. Plan yeah. together. Dream together. Pray together, for example. Mm -hmm. Prayer is so important, by the way, in a relationship. Statistically, we know that today, one in two relationships that get married mm -hmm. end up in divorce regardless if they have yeah. faith in God or not. This is a worldwide statistic. Okay. Yeah. But relationships that pray together, those that are Christians that mm -hmm. pray together every day, yeah. only one in 1,200 end up in divorce. Wow, that's a huge difference. It's massive. Yeah. And that just, shows to, that just proves to show that relationships are spiritual as well, mm -hmm. that we're meant to connect not just on a physical level, but on an emotional level, intellectual level, yeah. and also on a spiritual level. Yeah. That's why even sex is not just physical, it's also spiritual. Mm -hmm. Every time you have sex, you're connecting with the spirit realm as you are connecting with that person. Mm -hmm. So you're connecting with that person's mind, emotions, physical body, and their spirit, but you're also connecting with the spirit realm 
and whatever spirit you're being attached to at that moment. If it's a covenant marriage in God's design, the way God intended it, it's mm-hmm. going to be the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But if you're outside of God's design and vision for uh, you know, marriage and sex and intimacy, you're going to connect with another spirit. You're going to become a temple of an evil spirit and not even know it. That's okay, scary now stuff you're now. freaking I'm everybody freaking people out. out. Some people right now do know that when you're having sex, there are spirits involved. Absolutely, because <laughs> sex is not just a physical activity. It is emotional activity. You might deny your emotion. You might shut down your emotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a mental activity, but it is also a spiritual engagement of one's heart and soul and body. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what happens. It's supposed to be under uh, a canopy uh, of, of blessing and covering mm-hmm. because it's designed to make you one. Okay. And so there's always, you're actually stepping into covenant. That's what you're Yeah, there's doing. a whole lot more going on during there's the sex act than just something physical. Uh, absolutely. And in today's, you know, smash and pass culture, you can only imagine what they're opening doors up to and how that's affecting them in even recognizing the right mate one day. So they got to deal with some of the stuff that they may have walked into unknowingly even, you know, because well, of the culture just, of our as, world. As you're just saying mm-hmm. that, I'm just thinking about even in our sexualized culture where people usually have multiple sexual partners um, and, and all these other spirits that are attaching to them in that time, mm-hmm. that's bringing a lot of confusion um, and anxiety, all of these types yes. of things. And now in the midst of that, you're trying to find the partner God has for you and play the role That's that right. God has for you. But you're kind of under the influence, if yeah. I can put it yeah. like that, of a whole lot of, dem- I'm going to use that word, demonic stuff, That's bad right. stuff, yeah. Yeah. spirits that are not in it for your best interest. Well, and it's got to affect the way that you're living out now, your, the role God has called you That's to right. And, and in reality, your body count is probably higher than you think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because <laughs> for everybody, there's a few spirits that you we've got it. <laughs> and so, you know, there's more engagement going on with your body than you really know. Oh, my so goodness. So, it's not just a body count, it's okay. a spirit count, too. I can feel people get, freaking okay, out right now course, thinking yeah, yeah. about that. But this is real, and that's why they don't understand that when they engage in sexual activity, it mm. forms a covenant in the spirit realm. And now that spirit has a right to follow you and your generational line, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So this could have started generations ago in your family and that thing will keep following you. So maybe you struggle with poor relationships in in your family, your Mm -hmm. grandpa, your grandparents. Like We always have conflict in our home, divorces, Mm -hmm. multiple marriages, this problem, that problem, affairs, or, you know, and so forth and so on. And you're like, hey, what's happening in my life? It's just like, I can't find a real relationship. And you're you're trying to follow the world system and it's not working for you anyway, Mm -hmm. but you're also picking up baggage, but your baggage might be heavier than you think. Okay. As so well. It's coming because from it's your not generations. Just, it's, it's not just emotional baggage. It's not just the heartbreak uh, and anxiety you experience in the relationship, as you mentioned, mm. but it's also spiritual baggage. So now you carry a certain sp- scent in the spirit world, so to speak. Everywhere you go, uh, a spirit is going to try to bring you into the wrong relationship with the wrong person mm. to, uh, to emphasize that trauma. Uh, deeply drive that trauma from your childhood into your life even further to then keep you from a destiny relationship, keep you from the love story that God has for you. Because just like God is the author of love stories, Satan is the author of destroying relationships. Yeah, He loves to destroy relationships. Like mm. he started in the garden, the first marriage. We yeah. always talk about this, how he came in there and he took the first woman of creation aside and helped her move in the realm of fantasy. Mm-hmm. And showed her a different vision, yeah. which then opened the door. He actually got into a relationship to bring the fall of mankind. Yeah. If yeah, there was no relationship and there was no access to the relationship, the yeah. enemy could not have gained access to the fall of mankind. That's yeah, how wow. he did it. Wow. So relationship yeah. <laughs> is very important. So Satan's a master at this. Yeah. Okay. You need to help us here a little bit because all of these, let's, all of these demons, mm. all of these things that are baggage that we're carrying yeah. with us, this is going to have a direct effect on how we behave. So, for example, even in these proximity relationships, you know, for example, Ruth and Boaz, if mm. when they're in that relationship, if she was carrying, you know, a whole lot of this kind of baggage, she may not have played her no. role the, no. the way that God no. wrote it for her. And I. I just have a suspicion that some of us are not playing our role oh. because the effect of you know these types of things these spiritual things like what you're talking about things from our past or even the way we expect things to be that's changing how we actually operate within a relationship yeah it changes our perception you see because when, when we come to god and we come to jesus and you're like hey you're real so you're the author of my love story okay great how does it work and you think tomorrow morning it's going to happen yeah but the reality is God's going to work some things out of us. Mm-hmm. And so what we, God wants to do is he wants to develop your character 
and he wants to forge your identity in Christ. He wants to make you the authentic version that he designed you to be. Mm -hmm. He's the only one knows. He's the designer. He's the manufacturer. He's the one who put the dreams in your heart. He's the one who wrote the manual, the book upon you yeah. before you were born, right? Yeah. So as you get around the Bible and you begin to read God's heart towards you, certain things are going to resonate with you. Okay. And then God's going to cause you to begin to look at some things in the mirror mm -hmm. that you maybe need to address, uh, some things you've picked up, some habits along the way because of the culture you were raised in. Okay. Or maybe it's the family you were raised in. Because that affects us, how we view. Yes. And if we're talking in the context of relationships, you would look at your parents' relationship or yes. lack of relationship, and that would deeply imprint on you as a child. It would. So, so by the time a child is seven years old, I know we talk about this a lot, they're already picking up uh, on things in, in their parents' relationship. Mm -hmm. And at a, as a child, you never say it's the parents' fault if they're arguing or fighting. Yeah. You always think it's my fault. Because yeah. the child believes the parents love me mm -hmm. and I love them, so I can't think that of them that way. Mm -hmm. So they don't have an ability to recognize the difference so they think something's wrong with me. Yeah. And so let's say you're a child that's so vulnerable and so open and you love children, right? They're so amazing how they have childlike faith. They'll jump yeah. into your arms off the staircase because yeah. they know you're going to catch them. You're <laughs> yeah. like, wow, you're bold, right? Yeah. But they just trust. Mm -hmm. And so when they see this type of activity, they start to see their trust being violated, but they don't know what to do with it. Okay. And so now they develop certain patterns of behavior in life where, where they think, well, hey, wait a minute. Uh, if, if I get too close, uh, I might get into trouble. Mm -hmm. So all these dynamics are playing out with a child. So sometimes childhood trauma can seep in. Okay. Then you get into your teens and, and you see things going on in your family. They're not healthy, for example, mm -hmm. manipulation, control. Remember the curse, uh, that curses yep. relationship yep. in Genesis 3.16, the mm -hmm. NLT translation talks about control, vying for control yeah. between men and women in relationships and not understanding they're not two people. They're actually one. They're supposed to become one. Yes. They used to be one, but they became two. Yeah. Now God's like, in Christ, I want to make you one again. That's the only way to become truly one, mm -hmm. spirit, mind, soul, and body. And so in that process, you develop certain habits or traits. You don't even know them. Mm -hmm. Then you get into your own relationships. Maybe you had some heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had uh, you ran into an abusive relationship. Okay. And usually you're drawn to, so here's how it starts. You're drawn to a chaotic relationship because you only knew chaos as a child. So you're drawn to what is familiar to you because you yes. feel comfortable in that kind of yes, an environment? Yes, because you're comfortable with it, mm -hmm. even though it's not good for you. Yeah, but you know how to behave in that environment. That's right. So, so your psyche begins to say, hey, wait a minute, go to this, and you're looking for chaos, but a part of you is used to dealing with so much drama mm -hmm. that you're attracted to drama. Ah, yeah, that's very, very okay. true. Yeah. Okay, because it creates highs and lows. Mm -hmm. Drama trains your brain to experience highs and lows because when there's drama, there's also moments of joy and peace after the drama mm -hmm. or there's mm -hmm. reconciliation or there's love and you're like, wow, this feels so good. Ah, but so it's creating the drama so I can get this good feeling yeah, or something. Yeah, and, and it's not really, and meanwhile for you, the good feeling would have been, hey, you know, I'm sorry. That's all it was. <laughs> yeah. But there wasn't a change of behavior. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, I, this is good enough. Yeah. So now you get into a relationship and, and you see the man or the woman you know, acting a certain way mm -hmm. and there's drama and there's an escalation of a fight and there's this and you're like, you still want to stay in the relationship because as a, that inner child is fighting for the right to make this work because what you're saying is this is not my fault. I can do better now. I can redeem my childhood by making ah, this relationship work. Okay, so you get into the same relationship and then it becomes like your mission to make it work and, and fix yeah, it. Because now you're powerful because when you're a child, you had no power. Ah, but you're coming now, back to that control, control and power, and power. Issue. Now you got some power. Now you're like, I, I am intelligent. I am sharper at this. I, I kind of know what I'm doing. And, and you're like, I know how to voice my opinion. I know how to stand up for what I want or mm -hmm. what, what I disagree with. I have a realization. And you try to deal with it. And then when you feel like you're, the relationship is failing, you take it personally. It's me failing. Ah, okay. And so therefore you try to make it work. And when that relationship goes through heartbreak and falls apart, mm -hmm. the next time another guy or another girl comes along, you get back into the same thing. And you just keep trying, you, you actually get stuck in a pattern of trying to do the same thing yeah. because you're, you're trying to fix your childhood. Yes, you're trying to. And however, if you come to Jesus mm -hmm. and you build a relationship with your Heavenly Father, He'll begin to make you aware of those moments. Okay. There's many times in my life where God has, you know, taken me down and showed me something that happened to me as a child and said, son, this is where this thing started for you. Okay. And then you're like, wow. And then you, well, just the awareness of it and coming to light mm -hmm. sets you free. Because mm -hmm. then the Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, 
Let me help you with this. And then you change your attitude about this. You change the way you talk about it. You change the way you think about it. You change the way you treat people in that particular mm -hmm. area, whatever it might be that God's yeah. dealing with you about. And so you change. In other words, you mm -hmm. become the authentic version of yourself. But then you don't get drawn into the same type of relationships you because it. you've changed. So you're no longer drawn even to the type of person who would be in that yeah. kind of relationship yeah. with you. One of two things happens. Mm -hmm. If you're used to chaos and drama, so remember, drama creates trauma. Okay. Right? Drama creates trauma. And then trauma, you know, perpetuates drama. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, so this cycle keeps going from family to family. Mm. You know, parents to children to children to children. Yeah. You see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Most parents are like, hey, if I do have a good job as my parents did, I did, I'm a good parent. Yeah. So the measuring stick is totally not. Messed up. There's no yeah. standard. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is reset our standards and align uh, with God's version of vision and standard for a relationship. That's why God has to separate you for a little while from your version of relationships okay. and what you think is right. And let, he wants to get his thinking and his heart into you. Yeah. Because we've you, got so much stuff oh. actually over here. I mean, you're just talking about a ch your childhood uh, on one level, but there are a number of things. I oh. mean, the heartbreaks you go through or yeah. everything that happens to you, it, it kind of is going to affect how you behave in relationships. Yeah. And so, for example, a big one I find with people. So let's say they're now in this state of prayer and they're like, okay, God, I want to keep my eyes open. Who's that girl? Who's that guy that you bring <laughs> into my life? What's happening? Now, we also got to address the fact of what are your fears mm -hmm. about playing your role? So one of the fears is I want, to be, I want to be the real version of who I am. That's step one. Okay. Step two, you want to have some character, develop your character. Mm -hmm. You want to develop some humility along the way. Mm -hmm. This is all going to help you. Yeah. And as you go through this process, what you're going to find is you might have a fear of rejection. Because you've experienced rejection and it hurts, you know, rejection And just hurts. about everybody actually does have yes. a fear of rejection. Because everyone's experienced rejection in some shape or form in their yes. life. And some people are more uh, sensitive to rejection. Mm. And what begins to happen is if you've experienced rejection a few times, you start to expect rejection. So then you attract the spirit of rejection. Remember okay, we talked about it? Yes. Because rejection is not just a feeling, it is also a spirit. Mm. It can just be a feeling yes. if it's momentary, but then there's also a spirit of rejection that can follow your life. Okay. So then your mind is trained to expect rejection and you attract the spirit of rejection mm -hmm. and it brings about more rejection. Yeah. Or at least in your experience and whatever yeah. that relationship might be. Yeah, because it's kind of like, you know, the way I understood it was that in the spirit, with that spirit of rejection, it kind of like writes rejection, you know, please reject me across yes. your forehead. So you just walk into a room and because you expect rejection, what happens is everyone rejects you. Yeah. And you go, you see, you know, yeah, that's and then, what happens. And then you, now you say, okay, I'm afraid of rejection. I can't afford the pain anymore. Mm -hmm. What can I do to avoid rejection? Well, let me control how the relationship should go so I don't have to experience rejection. Okay. Or um, let me reject the other person first if I think it may not go so I don't have to be rejected. Yeah. But it might be something good, yeah. but you're so afraid that there eventually your pattern is rejection. So you're eventually going to be rejected. So if you get something really good mm -hmm. and you get a non-chaotic person or partner that's actually a Christ man or a Christ woman that's a little bit matured and overcome some things and mm -hmm. walk through their situations and journeys and, and healed out of their situation and trauma. Now they're like, hey, I just want to love you like Jesus loves me. Loves, mm -hmm. loves me. I want to offer the same love to you. I want to take the experience I experienced in Christ and offer it to you. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I'm going to really, this is strange this is, to me. This is, this is too good to be true. This can't be. Mm. So then you're like, okay, I might want to test this thing. Uh, and, and you might want to do some things. You might want to reject the person. Because I can't afford this level of love because this seems real. This is activating something deeper in me that normally never gets touched. The part of me that I've worked so hard to hide, the authentic version of who I am, mm. the part of me that wants to be vulnerable I'm afraid I might get vulnerable. If I get vulnerable, I might get rejected. It'll be deeper hurt. So I'd rather afford ending this relationship now than becoming vulnerable and getting rejected later. Yeah. That could be one symptom. I just know so many of our listeners are, are understanding this. Just, you know, drop us a comment right now in the comments and just tell us, is this resonating with you? Do you have you seen this in your life or seen it in those around you? Because I know in my life, I recognize this from early years of my life, This yeah. exactly this thing. Yeah. And, and the other thing, and many people will relate to this, right? Mm -hmm. We all deal with rejection. Uh, the other common thing is 
if you don't want to protect yourself from rejection, you will self-sabotage mm. the proximity relationship that God's in your life. That's the point. Wow. See, God starts to bring the person in your life, but you'll self-sabotage it. What does that mean? If you haven't dealt with the script and the narrative in your mind that either you're not worthy mm -hmm. or you're like, um, you know, this is going to fall apart because I have no hope it's going to be for real. It's yeah. too good to be true. What are you going to do? You're going to self-sabotage. So what do you do? You say, okay, let me go after a wrong relationship right now. A relationship that I know is not good for me. Yeah. Because I, I'm afraid and I don't want to do I'm in this uncomfortable new space. Yeah. It's a new territory for me. Let me go back to chaos. So you kind of, so uh, the picture that's coming to my mind right now is like, you know, here's this proximity relationship, someone that you like, and you're realizing, okay, I don't know if this is going to work, or you're feeling something that's triggering something inside of you that feels yes. real. And then you decide, oh, I'm just going to go flirt over here with a few over here. I'm going to yes. go do something that's familiar to me. And you actually, you don't even want that because right. you really want this, but you just, you know, you find yourself just yeah. doing these yeah. things and you're like, What's wrong with me? Because you're programmed, you have a habit, right? So what you say is you're trying to actually not face the real thing. Yeah. So you go to something you're comfortable with. Even though it's chaotic, at least you're comfortable and you, and you believe this time I'm better at this. Yeah. So you go for the wrong woman, wrong guy, and you feed a certain need of yours. Uh, you, 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 know, you, mm -hmm. you, you begin to numb the situation or you ignore the genuine feeling or deeper sense of connection that's awakening in you yeah. or you feel like you're becoming too vulnerable or could become vulnerable mm -hmm. or you could be drawn to this relationship and you're really afraid that if you really give your heart, you'll be, you'll be, done, you'll be done for because mm -hmm. you can't afford and risk another heartbreak you can't afford the kind of pain you might experience and you're intuitive about it particularly women they're more intuitive about this mm. men just close down and they're like okay i'm just gonna have lots of sex mm. now women are being trained to do this in this generation as well yeah. and and they're doing the same thing but they're they're shutting down a whole element of themselves because women are designed to be more intuitive more receptive mm -hmm. and, and so it's affecting them as well so it's like what you start when you start to feel the real you're actually a little bit afraid well, well, if you, of if the power of that love or yeah. the real thing well it's, it's the same example let me use it when people first encounter god throughout the bible mm -hmm. every time somebody encounters as a vision or encounters god or has a supernatural experience guess what the first thing is they hear they said be not afraid <laughs> Be okay. not afraid. Why? Because we're just afraid. <laughs> because mm -hmm. since the fall of man and woman, since that relationship problem occurred in the garden and the curse stepped in, remember they were afraid of God, they hid themselves. That's right. Yeah, the right? first thing. And yeah. they started blaming each other. Mm -hmm. They started wanting to have control. Yeah. They, they weren't one anymore where we made a mistake. They didn't do that. God yeah. said, who made the mistake? They didn't say, I did. Or <laughs> yeah. She did. And Satan did. Everybody. It, it's the whole drama started. Mm -hmm. And so in like manner, what happens is we don't realize that our vulnerability in our relationship with God, you know, true love, perfect love, mature love casts out all fear. Oh. And so when we get this love developing in our life and we realize how much we are loved for who we are and we're unconditionally loved, that starts to change our appetite for love. Okay. It also changes our narrative of what love should look like. Mm -hmm. And then it also helps us recognize a Christ man or a Christ woman when we yeah. encounter them because they're going to be different. And they ought to be different. If you're looking for God's version of a love story, it better be different. Yeah, it's got to look way different than the world. It can't yeah. be the same thing. So <laughs> it's got to be different. So that means it's going to be something more real than you've experienced before. Mm -hmm. It's going to shock you a little bit. It's going to mess with you a little bit. It's going to be like, what is this? This is mm -hmm. different. Yeah, I am attracted. But you're like, because you're going you're gonna to pr approach it through the, you're going to start projecting on the relationship, possibly your negative experiences. For example, mm -hmm. rejection. Okay. Is this person going to reject me now? Because that's all you've known, right? Yeah. We're usually talking about rejection yep. more. Or you're going to, like we talked about, you might self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, or there's a third thing you could do. You could approach okay. the relationship and you could be like, hey, I was hurt last time and I made an inner vow that I will never, ever do this or say this because of what happened to me in my life. So is that an inner vow? That's an inner vow. When you make a like a, that's it's a vow, a strong decision yes. inside of you to say, I'm never going to yeah. do this again. And, and it's designed to protect yourself. Okay. See, when we do these things, it's a protective mechanism because when we're young, our brains are relying on other people to protect us. Okay. And when we don't have the safety of a love of a father and a mother, both of the parties, mm -hmm. when we don't have a proper safe environment, uh, we don't know how to protect ourselves. So we shut down. Okay. As children. Mm -hmm. But as we start to uh, get a little bit older, 
we start to protect ourselves through, ma through manipulation, through control. It's mm -hmm. usually unintentional. It's subconscious. Yeah. It's not evil necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's just, you're just trying to be safe. To be safe, yeah. To protect yourself. And then you had some bad experiences. So now you make an inner vow that says, no matter what, I will never say this to a girl. I will never let her see my heart. I will never show my cards. Or the mm -hmm. girl says, I will never ever tell a guy how I really feel about him. Mm -hmm. Or you might set up a set up rules and say, until the guy does this, 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 and this, I'll never admit I really like him. But is this, if this inner vow, if you, you know, if you just say that to yourself, isn't it just words? Or what you're saying is this goes beyond just, oh, I, I yeah. kind of said to myself, I'll no, never do no. this again. Much you're deeper. saying it has a much deeper impact. Yes, it does. Especially if it's connected to pain. Uh, it, it, it basically creates a synapse in your, in your brain, but especially also in the spirit realm. You're actually aligning with another spirit. You're giving permission uh, to the enemy to to uh, to have a spirit oppose your love story. So by simply saying things like "I'm never going," "I'll never tell a guy That's that right. I love him," or "I'll never do this," you're saying there's a spiritual element that comes yeah. into a play. A spirit here. will come and accommodate that to make sure that it never happens yes, to you again. Yes, because now he knows how to get you. Okay. He knows how to get you mm. because now when a proximity relationship comes into your life. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what needs to happen to train. But meanwhile, God is working on the other side. God's like, I need you to overcome that vow. I need you to overcome that fear of rejection. I need you to overcome uh, the habit of self-sabotage. I want you to overcome your fears because I love you. Would you come hang out with me? Would you uh -huh. let me love you a little bit? Would you let me help you discover who you really are, how I see you? So this is really why it's so important to take when God kind of pulls you to himself and takes you into that what we call kind of a waiting time where you have to stop having those relationships. It's for this reason because yes. he's trying to deal with these things that would actually sabotage you when you're in that yes, proximity relationship. God doesn't just, hasn't just written the story. He wants to put you in proximity of the person. But he wants the story to actually occur. Yeah, he, he wants you to play the role, yeah. <laughs> he, he wants you to play your role. And so some of these things keep us from playing the role. So, so you got to start with a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Just like you started with a clean slate with God, you got to say, okay, God, I'm open to how you're going to bring this relationship into my life. How do I need to grow? How do I need to change? How do I become more of who you've made me to be? Mm -hmm. How do I discover who I actually am in yeah. Christ? And how do I live this life in relationship with you? And you start there, and then you'll start to realize, how are some relationships in my life I need to change? Mm -hmm. And you'll make you aware. When you're a child, this is how you grew up. This is not the way of the kingdom. This is not my way. Mm -hmm. This is not love's way. And you begin to understand real, genuine love. Mm -hmm. How do you recognize love? You know, even yeah. Jesus said it this way. He says, love others as you love yourself. Yeah. But you can't love others, in other words, you can't love your neighbor yeah. like yourself. But if you, what if you don't love yourself? Well, that's the question, and, and, and a lot of people don't. And what if you don't know yourself? Mm. How do you love what you don't know? But when you get with God, you start to discover who you really are, because God starts saying to you, son or daughter, I wrote a book about you. You're unique. Mm. There's not another person on this planet like you. I put my dreams in your heart. Mm. I put these desires in your heart. I defined you this way. This is the personality I gave you. That's why you notice certain things other people don't. This is why you're troubled by certain things other people aren't. This is why you're moved by compassion in this particular area of your life. This is why you have this type of gift where this comes easy to you. For other people, it's a struggle. For you, it's no problem. That's a, that's a gift I put in you. He begins to show you that's not, that, that there's a talent in you. Talents are of the soul. Gifts are within your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so God begins to show you this is your talent. This is your gift. This is your craft. This is your, your skill, your desire. And then I put this type of attraction. I put the mystery of attraction in you. Mm -hmm. That you would be drawn to this kind of person. Mm -hmm. You would be drawn to this. This is what someone's going to be drawn to you. But if you don't become the real you, see in God's love story, you have to play the real character. That's the real you. That's yeah. the problem. You can't play a superficial unauthentic, false version, hiding version of yourself. None of those are going to work. Yeah. You have to be the real you because in God's movie, you got to be the real you. It's not a movie That's where you can be an actor or an actress. That's right. You can't play someone else's role. You can't. Because, you, because he wrote the role for you. He wrote it for you. So until you become who you are, you won't even be able to step into that relationship. Which, by the way, would help any relationship. If you just become who you <laughs> just are. Just become yourself, yeah. <laughs> That's real love. Yeah. So you want to be loved for who you are. You want to be accepted for who you are. It's risky. Mm -hmm. Of course it's risky. Mm -hmm. But it's so worth it if you can actually have it. Yeah. But when you get into a relationship with God and trust Him, you have a chance now of having it. And you got to understand where the enemy is trying to get in. So the enemy will also get in the middle of proximity relationships because at some point he starts to figure out there's potential here. 
He yeah. begins to recognize the light and the destiny and the power that this could be a power couple in the kingdom. This could be a dangerous couple because when two get together, they become extremely powerful, mm. exponentially more powerful, and the enemy knows that. Mm. And so he says, I need to get in the middle of this relationship. Mm -hmm. I need to create some misunderstanding. I need to trigger the past trauma in either party or both parties. Yeah. I need to I need to get some conflict involved. I need to send some of my, I need to deploy some messengers That's of right. mine to create some strife and, yeah. and conflict between them. I need, to, I need to send some competition yeah. into the mix, into the ring. I, I need to bring chaos back in, yeah. you see? So all this, so it's very deliberate. Yeah, because he knows, he, like you said, in the, he knows how powerful marriage is. And he also, because he understands, you know, he's seen God work. He understands yeah. proximity relationships. Oh, yeah. So he probably, the enemy probably picks them up, picks up on them quicker than we do. Oh, absolutely. That's why so many people, they end up before they're, kind of just before they're with the right person, they end up in a wrong yeah, relationship. Yeah, they do. And that relationship, if they don't realize, you know, and come out of it, it takes them completely off course. It and they, they end up marrying and, the wrong person. Yeah, you could literally marry the wrong person. Unfortunately, we know this is true mm -hmm. because we wouldn't have 58% people getting divorced. Yeah. I'm sorry. That includes Christians, includes people of faith and, and non-Christians or non-people -pe yeah. of no faith. So come on. Yeah. So we got to get down to real here. We're not suggesting you're in a wrong relationship if you're watching this. Mm -hmm. We're suggesting if you are married and you made a covenant with God, mm -hmm. or if you don't know God and you know God, you bring God into the center of your relationship, he can heal it. Absolutely. He can, he can allow the best version of that relationship to now begin to come forward. Exactly. Right? Because God can redeem anything. He can redeem it. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to start out with saying, God, I'm going to create the biggest problem I possibly can. <laughs> And see how you fix it. Yeah. And let's see what you're going to do. Yeah. But you, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a struggle. Yeah, there's a lot, there's you know, a lot of pain involved It's a lot of pain in involved It's not in worth it. And so if you have a chance to start right now mm. and you're not in a relationship and you're not married yet and you're seeking a spouse and you want to do it God's way, why not learn from all this and let's do it well? Yeah. So maybe you have a bad family history. You don't want to duplicate that one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, maybe... You don't want to, you know, operate out of playing games to protect yourself because that's often what happens. Yep. Because you try to say, look, I'm going to make this person give me what, what I want. But that's not genuine love anyway. No. You know, no. what, you, what you woman wants that? You have to keep making that? them do that. Yeah. You know? What woman wants that kind of relationship yeah. and what kind of man wants that? See, men also want to be desired. If mm. they're not desired by the one they love, they mm. lose attraction in towards them. Because they want to be loved as well. They want to be admired. They want to be appreciated. They yeah. want to be. They want a woman that values the price they paid to be where they are. They want a woman that values, uh, you know, what they've built, what they've mm -hmm. accomplished. They want that. They want that encouragement. They, they, there's somebody they're going to confide in this person. Mm -hmm. So they need this kind of trust in their relationship. They're going to share their vision if they have one. Hopefully, yeah. they have one. If not, they're not quite <laughs> ready, not quite yet ready yet for a relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. But oftentimes, I find God brings you in the proximity of the one he's got. And usually this happens when you start praying and you're sincerely praying and mm -hmm. you start changing and growing a little bit, boom. Yeah. God brings that person around you. And you know, your challenge is sometimes you don't see them because you don't have the ability to recognize yet the right kind of woman for you, the right kind of man. Yeah. And I'm not saying a man that's ugly, not attractive, or a woman that's ugly, not attractive. <laughs> Listen, you're going to have attraction. You must have attraction. Yeah. And we talk about that yeah. often. However, there's other factors that you need to recognize and you got to really deal with yourself because you, sometimes you don't know what's in you, like the fear of rejection, uh, you know, a, a, a vow that you've made or self-self yeah. until you get into a situation mm. where feelings are involved. Yeah. Where you exactly. start to get vulnerable. Brings it out, brings then it out and shows you. You're being challenged you. to be vulnerable, but you can't. And you're like, I can never be this vulnerable again. Yeah. I can't. All those vows have to go. You have to go to Jesus. You have to go to the Father and say, I'm surrendering them. Mm. And you have to break those vows, cancel those vows, and say, God, I don't want to have vows going into the relationship. Like Ruth, for example. Mm -hmm. If Ruth, because Ruth experienced trauma. Yeah, she She did. was from a family where all the men died in the family. Yeah. So she should have been afraid, how can I ever put my trust in a man? They might die. Yeah. And she went with an age gap relationship with the chances of him dying are sooner than hers. <laughs> yeah. But it's a proof of overcoming that trauma. Exactly. And she went in there and she's actually proposed to him. Well, mm. talk about going against the grain in culture. Yeah. Now, that's not what God's going to ask everyone to do. But if he asks Ruth and Boaz to do it and put the story in the Bible, there's going to be some times that yeah. a woman may have to make a first move or be able to overcome their rejection, their trauma, their inner vows, mm. which is a sign of your maturity and your growth and your ability to be vulnerable to let a man know that yeah. you like him or whatever the case might be. Yeah. And you might say, well, why would I do that? Well, you wouldn't do that to some guy that's walking down the street. 
but you might know somebody in a proximity relationship where they're a friend, they're a colleague, they're a co-worker, they're a supervisor, um, they're, they're a mentor, or whatever mm -hmm. the case might be. It's like, okay, this relationship's already established. It's already been defined. Yeah. So now the relationship is defined in this context, mm -hmm. and perhaps... Um, it, it, now the relationship has to shift. It has into to go to another level. A romantic level now. Mm -hmm. Well, someone has got to make that change, and it may be the man that does that, mm -hmm. because you want the man to lead, yeah. and you want the man to chase you, but you'd rather have the man pursue you. Pursuing mm -hmm. is a heart condition, mm -hmm. and his pursuing might be subtle, especially if he's a Christ man, because he respects you, because a Christ man. His love is equal to his respect to you. Yeah. He will never disrespect you. He will never want to uh, manipulate your free will. Yeah, that's Because he's matured enough to know, I need you to choose me just as much as I'm choosing you. Mm. Because guess what? I'm worth choosing because I know what I got. Mm. I know what I'm made of. I know the price I've paid. I know I'm a high value Christ man. And if I'm going to choose one woman, I'm not looking for the grass that's greener out there. I'm not waiting for another woman to come along. I'm looking to wife you up. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I, but that's, that's, what, that's what a Christ man thinks like. He's yeah. not looking to go date everybody. He's not looking for every woman to be attracted to him. He's looking for that one. Yeah. The one that he loves and wants and desires, he wants her to choose him too. Mm. And he needs to know for sure how you're different than other women. Yeah. Because he's already probably gone after some women. He's already conquered some women. He's already done all that. And he's like, hey, that ain't, that's not where it's all at. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, I'm looking for a woman. That isn't looking to be conquered, but I'm looking for a woman. Because when a man conquers a woman, he conquers her and moves on to the next one. Yeah. That's his psyche and psychology. Mm -hmm. He's not. He's looking for a woman that is mature enough that can be drawn to him as he's drawn to her. And he's like, oh, something's developing here. Mm. This is more deeper. This is something more meaningful. Mm. It's not just how attractive you might be to him. Yeah. He's looking for something much, much more deeper. Yeah. And he's aware of that. And a Christ man, by the way, chances are, he already has instruction from the Lord on what to do with you okay. if he's in your proximity and God has brought him. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten he does, by the way. Nine times. A Christ man, he's a bit mature. Yeah. He's heard from Jesus. He, he has knows, a relationship. He knows God. You see yeah. what I mean? He knows mm -hmm. God. So he's going to be looking. He's, he's already aware of proximity relation. Who's that girl? Mm. Who's that girl? Uh, and he's like, no. And he gets, he gets a sense right away, no, that's not the one. Mm. She might be beautiful. She might be amazing. She might be an awesome woman. But that she may not be his. Yeah. So he has an ability to be selective. He has the ability to recognize, oh, that woman's a little different. Mm. Oh, and he's like, I like her character. Mm. I like the way she's vulnerable. I like the way she's honest. I like the way she does have boundaries. But I also like the way she's not looking for the attention of other men. Mm. Yeah, she's not playing games. She, and she's not playing games. Because a Christ man's like turned off by that. Mm. You might be the potential woman, but he's like, hey, this, this can't work right now. Yeah. He has enough sense because he has vision to perceive the future. Mm. And so he's like, oh, wait a minute. He might pray for you. He might wait for you mm -hmm. if God put that in his heart. Mm -hmm. Right? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes there's that process too where the woman might be maturing or the man might be maturing. Yeah. And they might be the one. So you have to decide. And that's why you need that relationship with God. Is there something here, God? Yeah. Do I need to wait a little bit? Mm -hmm. Do I need to give it some time? Do I need to nurture this? Do I need to water it? But you can't do any of those things if you're locked up in your inner vows, in your self-sabotage routine, yeah. in your old way of doing things, playing games. None of that's going to work. Yeah. And these days... With what people are coming through in relationships, communication is gold. Having genuine communication will mature you as a person, develop you, and you'll understand the other person. They'll communicate with you, and you're going to be like, "Wow, this is unusual. I'm not. This is amazing." <laughs> because in our current culture, young people don't even have this. Exactly. They're so sexualized and they're so mm -hmm. traumatized and overly anxious about what they've experienced in relationships. They don't know what it means mm -hmm. to feel a communication, have genuine communication with someone, yeah. share hearts, be able to understand. Not that you do this with everyone, yeah, but be able to see beyond even narcissistic tendencies in people. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that if you're not in Christ. You're not hanging out with Jesus. Yeah. And the same goes for men. So it's, a, it's both of them have to walk through this process. And both of them can have these challenges. Mm -hmm. So for men, if they're afraid of rejection, they'll just play games. They're like, they want to conquer you, manipulate you to okay. get you in bed usually. Because yeah. if they start the relationship that way, the, the end result will never be good. Yeah, it's never going to change. It's never going to change. And your whole relationship will be like that, and eventually you're going to fall apart, and you're going you're gonna to wonder what went wrong. Yeah. Well, that's what went wrong. But if you approach a relationship sincerely, and both parties do, you're going to know right away if this is the right thing or not. Mm. 
Yeah. Is this a Christ thing or not? Is this a God thing or not? Because remember, you're focused on your relationship with God, so you're able to re recognize certain markers. That's right. Certain instincts will kick in. The Holy Spirit will start to lead you. Mm -hmm. You ought to let him lead you. If he's the author of the love story, mm -hmm. he's already written it, and you're starting to discover how to play your role, you also got to be led by the Holy Spirit okay. in the role. Yeah. And sometimes what he asks you to do will be difficult. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be for you, maybe you're like you're you're like dating like a champion, and God's gonna say stop dating, okay, right? Yeah. Or you've never dated at all, and God's mm -hmm. like, no, you need to go on some dates, okay? You see, yeah. it, it's just different for every person. Mm -hmm. God knows what you need to do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he'll he'll lead you that way, and he'll guide you along the way, and he'll help you along the way. But ultimately, he will position you uh, in the proximity of your future spouse, mm -hmm. and he'll bring them into your life. And when he does. You have to be ready to recognize. And you'll notice some things are going to be different for you. Mm -hmm. There ought to be because he, he or she better be different. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want a God version exactly. of a relationship exactly. and be ready, there'll be some spiritual activity around your relationship. Mm -hmm. Not only from God, but also from the enemy. Yeah. And be aware that you might suddenly become aware of patterns in your family in your generations that you're picking up on and mm -hmm. ways of thinking. That's why you need to be around the Bible and you need to be willing to change the way you think, change the way you see, change the way you approach things. And it's got to be genuine change. And for that, you need the Holy Spirit again yeah. to help you grow, change, and mature in the process. And guess what? You're going to get a great relationship. Yeah. And you're going to build a real marriage. <laughs> you're going to go, don't you want that Finally going to gonna get and, there. That's and right. And you're going to get a man to pursue you for the rest of your life. Pursuit is a heart condition mm -hmm. where he is wants to get to know you over yeah. and over and over again because as you grow, he grows. It's like there's more of you I want to discover mm. because you're a never-ending mystery mm. when you grow in Christ. Yeah. You become more beautiful. You become more amazing. So your body changes. Yeah. Your shape changes. But you, do, you grow and they love that. Mm. Vice versa. Yeah. So you're both. talking about getting into the real deal. It's the like real the deal. real thing that yeah. we're all actually looking for that yeah. we don't even know oftentimes. Uh, you actually begin to find it. And you find real connection. You find genuine intimacy and you're on your road uh, to experiencing relationship as the way God intended. Well, I just you. think this is, I, I know this has helped a lot of people today to be able yeah. to not only recognize what is a proximity relationship, but to, to, to become self-aware about what we might be doing to not play our role when we come into this place. So I want to encourage you, if you have a question that came up or you want to ask something, go to drfasselmalik.com, send us your questions, put it in the comments, follow us on social media, put your questions and comments in there. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and we do want to answer these questions in some future episodes i know it's stirring you all up so subscribe stay here and uh, keep listening